Hi, I'm Andrew Armstrong. Welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. I'm going to try to take apart this um, CHRA, I believe they're called, whatever. So to do this, I'm going to try to wang something on the end of here because I've already mauled this up with, of course, my pliers of doom. So I'm going to just bosh a lump hammer on the end of this. Now our socket has become permanently fitted and on the other end we're going to use a vice grips. Did you ever have one of those days where you're losing your mind because you can't find a tool? I cannot find one of my bazillion pairs of vice grips so I'm just going to have to use this bench um, drill, pillar, pillar drill clamp. Just going to plop that in there. Because I don't care about this impeller now I'm just going to crank the hell out of it. Ugh. Oh, it's actually breaking stuff as I'm turning it. Yeah! I don't think that... <laughs> it's actually at an angle, as you can see light through here. I don't know if you can see that on the camera. Right. So, if this was a normal circumstance, we'd be doing this way to tighten it. But someone told me it's a reverse thread, so let's try Oh, there we go. That was really easy. I'm absolutely shocked. I thought it was going to be really awful. Let's get that off. We can smack that out later. Actually, or even have a go at smacking it out now. Put that on. It's really, <laughs> it's really hard to get used to these reverse threads. All right. There we go. Just one nut. See, look, I'm tightening it again without even intending to. Finally, right, let's get all this away. Let's see what we can see. So, theoretically, this should come off the spindle, but now I'm looking. Oh. Maybe I should have put something on underneath. A lot of crud there coming out the bottom. Whatever this thing is. Let's keep going. Come out. Now at this point I should go and get a punch. But I'm just going to use one of my little screwdriver -y things. Here. Yeah, that's not going to work, is it? So if you're doing this at home, you're going to need a vice because you're going to have to basically put, put a puncher or something in the end of that and smack it so you can release these two parts. Let's see if I can rig something up. Oh yeah, this should work. I'm just going to see. I'm going to lock it against this flange here, and then just smack it this way. That should be just fine. It wasn't trying to run away. It took some bashing, I must say. I had to find somewhere to put it where I could put this against somewhere hard and just smack this pin through. But that's fine. It's done now. Let's have a look. So that slides out. There's clearly a load of filthy crap in here. And looking at that, it appears to have a seriously big chunk kind of taken out of it. That's damage caused by the wear on the impeller. It's just crunching it from underneath. So let's put that there. Let's put this here. A lot of crunchy crap here. I don't know if this is part of a seal or if this is just carbon buildup. I'm suspecting it's carbon buildup. It looks like a sort of a carbony type material. Just some grooves on the shaft and something I noticed on this impeller. Look, this is how they balance them. They must wear a chunk out. So really, you've got to be careful. There's no. I don't think really it's worth you trying to rebuild this part at home unless you've got some way of balancing that. 
I've got a star bit here. Regular thread, fortunately. I'm just going to go through all four. There we go. I can hear this getting crunched into my mat. That might be the end of this mat. I'll have to look for a suitable <laughs> replacement. Perhaps I need some back office teardown lab desk jotters. Anybody out there in internet land interested in a back office teardown lab desk jotter? If so, drop me a line. Then it'll be worthwhile me getting five made or something. So just to let you know, I've ordered a new turbo in the meantime. I was going to get the CRHA, the cartridge unit here, but the whole full turbo, including all of the bits and bobs and actuator and stuff, wastegate actuator was about an extra £15, so it didn't really make sense to just buy the module. But I'll show you that because you might want to still change the cartridge yourself and just show you what bits you get. Okay. So that just all jumped out at me and I dropped this bit. So there's at least one part I dropped and that was this. Look at that. Basically looks like a kind of a thing with a thing. If I could be any less descriptive. You can see there's an actual sort of collet with a a seal on it, like a, a bit like a piston ring seal, but it's I don't know what that would have done. So clearly that was in there somewhere. And then that lid was all plopped on top. We can imagine the shaft. So it's quite a tight, nice, tight fit there. And there's well, obviously lots of gubbins to get out of there. So I'm trying to work out really where where was ah. Oh. <laughs> Oh gosh, if, see, if, you're, if you're doing this at home, really, look at this, look how careful you have to be. So there's this weird thing in here, which has got like a kind of strange circular locking thing. You see that there? On a spring. Well, I don't know if it was spring or just pneumatic, but anyway, that seems to lock this brass uh, piece in place. Gosh, which in turn must seal to that bit, I'm thinking, which in turn seals to an inner plate, which in turn has this sealing thing. Okay, so I'm going to try to hold that all together with my finger while I put this shaft back in to see if we can determine oh, which part was worn out. And look at it, it's a nightmare, this. It's all actually coming apart as I'm sh shoveling that in. <laughs> Right, let's do that again. So our little shaft is in. We'll put this part in there. This part in there, right. Heard that crunch, it's not particularly a nice feeling. 